Hey, welcome everybody into uh, part four of our Volkswagen series. In uh, part three, I left you guys with uh, this thing needing needing an engine replacement, right? We had the scored bearings, the scored camshaft. Uh, it just, it wasn't pretty inside. And uh, fortunately, the, uh, the junkyard diamond auto parts, uh, they took care of me. So I went ahead and uh, swapped out this motor. Um, it's almost like I knew what I was doing. It, uh, it went really, really easy, and I was really, really pleased with the way this new motor turned out. It was super clean, no issues whatsoever that I've seen thus far. Um, strangely enough, no, no oil leaks. Uh, weird, right, for a two liter uh, BPY engine, but uh, super clean, super quiet. Just this motor runs quieter, the turbo doesn't make noise. Uh, this motor has roughly um, 80, 88,000 miles on it, so uh, slightly less than the, uh, than the motor that was in there. But here, I, uh, I went ahead and documented some of this in, in pictures. So here you can see the vehicle in, I think, what's called service mode, but basically you pull the entire front clip off. And really, guys, this isn't a bad motor job to do, especially when you're doing it the second time. It really doesn't take a ton of time to do, especially because you can really easily access that. So there we've got the front clip off. Here I've got the... Uh, the transmission separated from the engine. Now I'm sure you could probably leave the tranny in the car and use a, use a cross brace um, up top and, and keep the tranny in there, but I, I find it just as easy to separate the engine and the tranny when it's out of the car. I pull them out as a, as a unit. So there's the vehicle waiting for the new engine, um, all, uh, all set to go. And here's the mess that is involved in this job. You can see all the, all the components and all the pieces that are that are involved in sitting back there is the new engine. And it is a beautiful looking engine, nice and clean. It actually came with the, with the wire harness all the way back to the PCM, which leads me to a comment. Who has ever seen a theft deterrent device on a PCM connector? This piece of aluminum right here had breakaway bolts like you would see on an immobilizer, um, on an ignition switch type thing under, under the dash, um, where you tighten the bolts and the head breaks off. This little bracket was held on with that where you can't, uh, you can't unplug the PCM without uh, without removing this. So I thought that was that was really interesting um, that it had that that option. Um, I guess that's because the PCM is located under the hood on here. But there's a lot of other cars out there that PCMs are super easy to access that have no protection on them at all. So I just thought it was kind of weird. But I was very very happy that the new engine came with a full harness. It just saved me a ton of time of pulling things apart, rerouting the old harness. Um, so that that was really nice. I did get the turbo and manifold and everything attached to this one because I had turbo noise on the other one. So that was nice. Um, no issues with that so far. And here you can see the engine and tranny mated together and ready to go back into, into the vehicle. The old thumbs up. There we have it installed. It's just hanging on its two engine mounts. The tranny mount on the uh, driver's side and the, the engine mount on the, the passenger side. Just hanging there. Um, awaiting the rest of its components to be installed. There you can see most of it installed, ready for the front clip to go back on. So all of the intercooler tubing uh, will get plugged in here, uh, coolant pipes, that kind of thing. But it's basically ready for that front clip. And there's our front clip added on. And then the bumper itself, and the headlights, and then of course we end up with this, the bumper cover on, the vehicle is, is finished up. Just a few more things that would get buttoned up on there. But really guys, super smooth job. I really, besides the complaint of having to do it twice, I really don't have any complaints with, with this engine. Now, um, I know I had mentioned that I would pull the pump out and inspect the follower. Honestly guys, I did not pull it out. This engine was super clean. And the pump itself is actually really, relatively easy to pull um, in the car there's not really any benefit to pulling it out of the car so if i have problems with it i will pull it then but as of right now we are good to go in fact here take a look at the data from the test drive on here unfortunately I, for some reason it didn't record my load or rpm pid but these were under wide open throttle pulls um, first second and third gear and you can see there our, our peak on the graph comes in at 56.275 psi um, you can tell the graph is much flatter. We are gonna always have spikes in there just because the fuel pump sometimes has to catch up, right? So if there's a command and it either needs increase in pressure or decrease in pressure and just takes a, a few sec, a second or whatever to do that. Now again, remember that was 200 plus PSI for more than three seconds worth of time. So our high pressure fuel pump is keeping up just like it should at 50 some PSI difference uh, under wide open throttle. 
And again, that's just the pump catching up to, to desired. So I really have no complaints. This thing drove much better. It felt like it had more power when I drove it. Um, so far, so good. Now you see here, I have the lab scope hooked up. Uh, I've already recorded idle 3000 RPM and wide open throttle, just like we did before when it's warm. So let's go ahead and take a look at the lab scope data. Now we'll start with the data from earlier from the, the used pump. And we're looking at about 4.7 milliseconds warm idle at this exact spot. And we're pulling roughly 8.26 amps uh, out of the pump. And actually, if I, if I go ahead, I'll bring this back down so you can see it. But I have my, my cursor in there right at the peak, 8.26 amps. And uh, so this was before. This is the pump that was coding for, uh, for being out of spec. So again, 4.7 milliseconds. Let's go ahead and take a look at it now. This is with our known good what we have right now. And you can see my measurements, I've already got them laid in here, but we can zoom in. And actually I can correct this just a little bit. We're looking at about 4.67 milliseconds. And again, that's compared to 4.73. So really nothing major in terms of time. But what I did find very interesting was our amperage here, guys. We're at 6.88 amps. So, and again, on the other one, we were at 8.2. So a 1.4 amp difference at warm idle being pulled by this pump, roughly the same amount of on time, but overall a, uh, a, a lesser, lesser amperage. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this thing under 3000 RPM. So we'll just pick right about in here. Actually, before we do that, let's take a look at this spot right here. So here you can see the pump shutting off. Looks just a little bit different than what, oops, than what this did. Very similar. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll put known good on the left. So very similar looking. It spikes, drops down, has another small spike, and then drops down the rest of the way. Again, this is warm idle, known good on the left side, the other one on the right side. They look very similar. Now let's go ahead and grab um, roughly that, that 3,000 RPM mark. We'll go ahead and zoom in there. Um, we're pulling slightly less amperage now, about 6.5 amps. Our on time, known good, is... 2.3 milliseconds. Let's do the same thing on our previous recording. So still very similar looking. On time of 2.4 milliseconds, nothing major there. Let's check our amperage. Again, slightly, slightly lower, but nothing major. Uh, we're pulling roughly eight amps. So still about an amp and a half difference between the two. They look very similar across the top. And then let's go ahead and grab that wide open throttle pull, which is right in here. And then we'll do the same over here. Oops. So still very similar looking graphs on time of this one is of known good is roughly 1.6 milliseconds as compared to 1.6 milliseconds are pump current seven and a half amps compared to five, almost six, call it six amps. So uh, nothing majorly, majorly different there. Um, let's take a look at our, our pump current here. Oops. Just take a look at the way that, so it, pump current comes down. We see that little, that little hump there. We see a little hump there. So nothing majorly different. So really we're not looking at any huge major differences in the data that we captured. 
uh, mainly what we're seeing is a reduction in amperage, which really wasn't what I was expecting to see. I honestly thought we would be seeing a reduction in on time, especially at warm idle. I thought we would see maybe three, maybe three and a half milliseconds of, of total pump or solenoid on time at warm idle um, as compared to our four plus seconds from the, the worn out pump. But that's just, it's just not the case. Our on time is really about the same between either pump, um, which, is, which is really interesting because it almost tells me that even though we were lower on pressure with our, uh, with our old pump, our old engine, it doesn't seem like the computer did much to adapt to try to make that thing have higher pressure. It um, didn't seem to hold it open longer to build up more pressure, which I just found very, very interesting that the computer wasn't trying to, or it doesn't look like it was trying to adapt. Uh, the current on here um, is interesting as well. Could be directly related to the windings of the pump, um, but maybe, I don't know, the resistance had to have changed because our our voltage is still the same. So if we changed current, we would have had to change, had to change resistance on there, right? Because uh, voltage is the same. If we're applying that battery voltage, dropping it to ground for however many milliseconds and then returning it back to battery voltage, our voltage is the same for either pump, but our current is lower on our good pump, good engine here, which tells me that our resistance of the pump must be higher. Um, you know what, let's uh, grab the ohmmeter and take a look. Okay, so for those of you that have been following the channel for a long time, you know I don't put a lot of stock in resistance testing because it's, it's not dynamic testing. We have to isolate the circuit. It's not being functional at that moment. Um, but uh, the spec on the pump that's sitting in the old, in the old motor, 1.5 ohms, that's room temperature, so it's about 80 degrees in the shop right now. Uh, the pump on the vehicle right now, about 1.8 ohms of resistance, and that's warm. The pump is, is, is hot to the touch right now. So, really not a huge difference in resistance on that pump, but it has to have, it has to be changing. If our voltage is consistent, our current goes down, according to Ohm's law, our resistance had to have gone up on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that a known good pump should pull, uh, what were we at again? About six and a half at idle. Let's pull that again. A known good pump pulls, let's call it 6.9 amps at idle. That's what we're looking at right here. Because again, this is a known good pump, 6.9 amps at idle. That's the, that's the data that we were given. Um, very interesting to look at. I don't know um, if there's anybody out there that can help verify those specs. What have you guys seen? Have you seen similar uh, when dealing with this? I know I had a fault in the old system. It was a mechanical failure leading to uh, a trouble code. The camshaft being worn, the follower being worn, led to, to our trouble code. And I expect that that's directly relate into the electrical PCM control of our pump. Um, and it doesn't really seem like it moved as much as I thought it would. I really thought our voltage uh, window where we're actually grounding the solenoid to apply high pressure to the rail, I, th I, th I thought we would see a, a reduced, down, uh, reduced on time because our pump was actually functioning more efficiently than it had been before, but really just a current change, um, really no on time change. So just kind of interesting to look at, but overall guys, this vehicle is, uh, is really running great. I put on about 45 miles with it yesterday and I'm gonna put some more miles on it today, make sure that it passes emissions here, make sure that it passes all of its, its monitors. But I think this one is done guys. I think we can call this fixed. Kind of a lengthy fix for a P2293 trouble code, which is what this all started with. It seemed like it would have been so simple right in the beginning, right? Swap out the high pressure pump or the follower or whatever and call it good. This just happened to be, uh, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more than that. And that's, that's just the way it goes sometimes. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this series. Um, I've really enjoyed going through this and sharing this with, with you guys. I, I don't know how much I enjoy this car anymore. So um, I think, uh, I think it might be time to slap that for sale sign on it. Um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So again, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the series and, and how this was all documented. I, I hope you appreciate it and found it interesting. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button, uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, click on the, the little bell icon so you can get notifications. And uh, yeah, thank you again for watching. And as always guys, happy wrenching. Thank you.